control the presence we stand. <laughs> Through the absence of our pastor, certainly we are honored to stand here at his request. Our first lady and to the deacons and Reverend Richards, and to all of you who are present here today. Amen. Amen. From the book of 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, beginning with verse 7, and it reads, And at that time, Hananiah, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. <coughs> Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubans a huge host, with very many chariots and horsemen, yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hands. For the eye of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. And Asa was wroth with the seer, and put him in prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people the same time. Psalm 94, verse 9 reads, He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? Well, he that formed the ark shall he sleep. God bless the readings of his holy words. Amen. Our thought for today, the eye of the Lord runs to and fro. If you had any idea that you were escaping anything, You're always under the watchful eye of the Lord. Spurgeon said, the book of Psalms instructs us in a, the use of wings as well as words so that we can soar. It sets us both mounting and singing. This is the book that may make a skylark out of you or more so an eagle instead of some other bird. This book has been called the Eternity and Analogy of the Soul. It has blessed the hearts of multitudes and down through the ages. Whatever problem we have encountered or what opposition we've come up against, we seem to turn to the book of Psalms. When we find ourselves sick in the hospital or in the valley of despair, in the caves of bondage, or our hearts are overwhelmed, we turn to the book of Psalms. The Lord is well, <laughs> my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my very presence. Somehow we remember the Psalms seems to bring comfort to us. So he is my rock. He's, he's my rock, my fortress, my joy, and my salvation. Yes. Woo, Brother David, Brother David said, my deliverer and my shield. The Psalms seem to be, Sister Crawford, the voice of the church. Wow. Woo, it seems, it seems when you can't find members of the church, the Psalms seems to reach out to the yeah. Hazel and grab them. Yeah. All right, yeah. wow. I can find the church uh, in the book of Psalms. Yeah. Somehow the yeah. congregation seems how to just engulf me. Yeah. Christ the Messiah is prominent throughout this book. Psalm 94 to 100 forms a series of psalms that tell us a constructive story. God is omnipotent. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> all power. Wow. Oh, yeah. you, you can't do nothing but God. He got all the power, you see. He has all power. He is omnipresent. You, you can't out, you can't run out of him. Out of his sight. See, Brother David said, if I could have done that, I, I would have done it. And, and, and if I could have done it, I would have done it. But whatever. 
he says, if I met my bed in hell, <laughs> you see, you, you think if I go to hell, say, God won't come to hell. Well, hell, let me tell you something. He went in, he went in to the grave. He went in the He 
acknowledged that it would be, would be no good trying to run away from God. If we can hide anything from God, how can we possibly hide ourselves? Mm -hmm. God's hand will always be there to guide you whether we appear in heaven or whether we appear in hell. Mm -hmm. You see, if, if God wasn't there, you might be able to get out. Wow. So he's going to see that you go right on there to hell. The hell doesn't have any boundaries on God. Mm -hmm. So he's going to see that you get there. And that's where you're supposed to go. <laughs> David has a strong sense of God's presence. And it implies in his life he has lived in the light of his consciousness. When he says, the Lord is my life and my salvation. God speaks to the stupid and the foolish man. God is a spirit. He does not have ears like you and I have. But he hears. You see, you and I can hear some things, and then we can't, you know, you have to have a hearing aid sometimes to hear. So God doesn't need a hearing aid. He don't have glaucoma, and he doesn't have cataracts that he needs blessed. He does not need us to tell him anything. He remember, now remember the man who he saw up in the tree. Zacchaeus. He thought he'd run up the tree. But God got to the tree. You know, he knew. He knew wow. the whole time. The tree, listen here. The tree was planted there for the day when Zacchaeus would go up it. <laughs> This church was built here, moved here, built here for the day that when Deacon Mangum would sit right there. Yeah. Woo, God. Everything was all preordained by God from the very foundations of the earth. There is no surprises to him. Well, God sees you as you see them. The sinner down here on earth seemed to think he's getting away with sin. <laughs> Do that what happened too. God sees God hears even the smallest whisper. Yes. I'm a witness that you know he go right out there. Remember the Sunday I said, oh boy. <laughs> Went right over there. David says he knows my thought before they are formed in my mouth. God keeps a record of what man does. Yes. Revelation 20, 12 says, And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open. Pray God that you in the book, not the books. Which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book. All right. So today, nobody can go right in the book God writes. Nice. What evidence do you have? All right. Hang bells, come here. I saw the handwriting on the wall. All right. The Ten Commandments was written by the finger of God. So don't think you can't write. You can write. My brothers and sisters, there are only two places for our sins. They are either on Christ when you went to Calvary, or they remain on you who have not confessed Christ. If they are on Christ, then judgment has passed over you. Lamentations 3.7 22 and 23 said, The Lord has hedged me in. Jeremiah <laughs> said, The Lord has hedged me in, and I can't get out. When I cry unto him, he shut my prayer out. Don't get in that fix. This is kind of where Asa was. He was to me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in a secret place. He has made me desolate. But Jeremiah said, he 
comes back and he says, it humbled me and brought me to remembrance. This I recall to mind when I did, I had hope. Your only hope is in Christ Jesus. When you find yourself in a fix that you shouldn't be in, your only hope is in God. All right. Yeah. Don't try to find somebody else. Mm. I'm going to bring that back to you a little bit later when I go back to the text. Because I have to find yourself in that place. But some of us, we get so stubborn. We know we mess up. But we won't try to change what we mess up. I try to go to the source where we can get the help. But God sees you. We'll turn to everyone else, uh, every situation, but not to God. Right. But Jeremiah says, when he hedged me in, and humbled me and brought me to my good senses, sister, when I say those things that I shouldn't say, I remember, who are you talking to? All right, now. You're talking to God. You better back up here. Yes. It humbles me. This I recall the mind and I did and I had hope. It is the Lord, listen, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Yes. You only in a day because God has decided not to swallow you up. Because of his compassion, it fails not. They are new every morning is thy people. Every morning I get new mercies. New mercies I see. It calls me, thank you. Many of our great leaders and patriots of today's pastors and preachers have become watchmen on the wall. They are the eyes of God that are to see and read the vision and sound the alarm. They are called upon the name of the Lord to preach the acceptable year of the Lord as Jeremiah, Isaiah, Paul, and Matthew, John, and all those who were forerunners of Christ, and today Ezekiel saw him as a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Wow. And Ezekiel says, this sight was so awesome. He says, whose wheels turn not against themselves or each other. Always moving forward. Listen, saints, move forward. Don't go backwards. We must move forward in this life. And then he says, always forward. And at the same course, spokes of the wheel were full of eyes. Now that's the wheels turning. North, east, south, and west. We're all going in the same direction. Not pulling against each other. Well, he sees you. There's no way. You can't go to the south, the north, east, or the west because he sees you. It was full of eyes. Turning in the same direction. Does he who formed the eye not see? Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree. <laughs> Sarah, I saw you in the tent door. Sell, I saw you hiding. Gideon, I saw you treading wheat on the threshing floor, hiding from the enemy. Hagar, I saw you hiding in the desert. Paul, I saw you on the Damascus road. Well, God sees our good as well as our evil. We now turn to our text today. It is an awful thing, brothers and sisters, to fall into the hands of an angry God. Stay on the right path. Don't turn against God or man or the allegiance of God for man's control. The eye of the Lord is all powerful, bringing about protection and help those who fear to rest on him and not in place of foreign allegiance wow. and other God. Ask a lost faith in God. If you're like David, you feel like your feet are slipping. Almost gone. All right, now. God sees. His mercy is there to uphold you. If you call upon him and only to him, he held David up. Recognize that we are weak and frail and unrighteous. But you must know Christ and the power of his resurrection. It is a beautiful and glorious thing, the cornerstone of nobility, when men and women become the vessels of God, has chosen them to be. They achieve momentous achievement, bringing honor to God and mankind. Nelson Mandela, 27 years in prison, well. but brought about nobility and strength not only to his life, but to those that are around him, always acting upon the will of the Lord. God sees, 27 years, he 
even watching him. I know your pain. I, I see your, your toil and your struggle. Now, I may want to say, where are you, God? There is no God. But God said, I see what you're going through, but I'm building character. You see, man, I'm, I'm going to bring you out that one day when you come out that you will be a more help to thousands than you were of this this morning. All right. All right. Nations stood up. Leaders from foreign countries came over to recognize this man who gave honor and glory to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Still on the battlefield. King Asa called of God to lead God's people. He was called by God, anointed by God, ordained by God to lead God's people. Those whom God called, he foreordained. And he or, when he calls you, he gives you the strength and the power to go forth. Yes, yes. God's people had been given victory over the Syrian army. He, the thing that they got about it is that he did not, had not known what God could do. I could see him making this mistake. But sometimes we want to forget about God and we want to be buddy-buddy with other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the foolish people. <laughs> making your allegiance with those of the world. Let us not forget who got us the victory and whose hands and principles let him who think he stands take heed lest he fall. Yes. What is man when we turn from us, when God turns from us? Asa was God's employer. Is reproved by the prophet, the preacher, he warns him he is headed for a downfall if he does not turn around. How many Sundays does the word go from this pulpit? Take heed for where you're going. Sound the alarm. Come in before it's a time and a time too late. Come to the Lord. Uh, put, your, put your faith and trust in him. Wow. But we trust our job. Uh, make our allegiance with the world wow. and what we have. Yeah. Asa made a league with the enemy because of his great army. Who can be greater than God? Right. Hmm? Who can be greater than God? If God be for you, can't nobody be against you. Yeah. Like right, King Saul, he took avenues to help himself. With the instruction of help from God's prophet. Never think for a moment that God does not see you. Well. God was much displeased when we distrust him. If he makes a promise, he will keep it. He is a man, he's not a man like you and I. He's not a man that he should lie. When we trust and put your faith in him, he is pleased and give honor to him as Asa should have done. We do foolish things, but didn't repent of it. All right. It is a foolish to, uh, thing to learn lean on a reed. It's like leaning on a straw mm -hmm. compared to God. Mm -hmm. You're going to fall right over. Mm -hmm. But when we lean on the everlasting arm of God, mm -hmm. rather than the rock of ages, mm -hmm. rock of ages cleft for me. It's a rock, the God is a rock that will never ever give way. Especially when God has brought us out before. But the Bible says our hearts are deceitful and good. We trust God when we have nothing else to trust. That is not faith. We must trust Him always. He acted against His knowledge of God. And his providence, can we be as NASA? Are we trusting the uh, job? Are we trusting the lotto? Are we trusting other things, the branch of your bet to bring us out? Have you not heard or read the eye of the Lord runs to him for? He misses nothing. Nothing he needs. He holds strongly to those whose heart is perfect. His eye, the eye of the Lord is quick sighted. See, he don't blink. Wow. You and I blink if we miss something. 
He don't blink. But he, 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 he's constantly watching. He don't miss nothing. Well, See, many times in the court, they'll ask you a question, you, are you sure of what you saw? You don't have to ask God. He's sure of what he saw. He knows what it is. Amen. So he, he is quick sighted. He don't blink. It runs. It is intent. It runs to and fro. It reaches far. Mm -hmm. I pull off my glasses. I can't see well, too well yeah. in the back. Well, I can't see my sister on the door there too well, even though I got them on. <laughs> see, sister, God sees you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah! He, he sees you already. Not only does he see your parents, my sister, but he sees everything about you. Amen. And his testimony can't lie. Don't be like the man that God touched, and he said, "Whom do you? What do you see?" He said, "I see ministry." God said, uh -uh. "You know, man, no tree." You need, I need to touch you again. You're not seeing right. Well, you see, we don't see right until we have the spirit and the power of God. But in us. You can't see nothing but evil. Well, That's why we can't get along with people because our eyes are crooked. Our sight is near, too nearsighted. We're too busy looking at ourselves. But when you see through the eyes of God, look beyond my sister, my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you see my need. Wow. Yes. All right. yeah. That's what the sight of God is all about. I can see past uh, uh, your scenario here. Yeah. And I can see that there is something good in you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm looking through the eyes of God. Wow. Yeah. I don't have carnal vision, but I have a spiritual vision. Uh -huh. Amen. have to do. We don't see men as trees. We don't discard evil for good. Evil is just evil. The devil is just who he is. I can see righteousness is righteousness. And I'll give praises to God. It runs to and fro. It reaches far through the whole earth. No corner of which is from under it. You see that no get ducking under? Ain't no corner that God in. God hasn't been in. Uh, you see, God can go in the corner and come out whole. Glory be to God. You see, we duck in the little corners. We say ducking and dodging. We duck into these little corners and stuff as if God can't. I wonder what we think we do. You, you can hide it from me and then you get in the corner with us. Yeah. <laughs> Our dark are distant and his eye does not direct. It doesn't get dark enough. And I, I oftentimes say to South Sister Hazel, when I, go, when I go home, I said, Lord, no time did we do that as if no lights on the pole. It seemed like to me, dark be reaching out at you. <laughs> but it never gets too dark for God. Because he is the light. That's what, when the light comes out, ever, ever wonder why people don't want you around them? Especially if you're holy. You're living right to the people. People don't want you in their space. Because, you know, it's nothing about you because the light in you shines up on them. Wow. And it shines up. When it shines up on them, they see the evil deeds. I don't want you here because you reflect on me. That's why John said, I'm not the light. But I bear witness of the light. His hand, his arm are powerful. He is all powerful. Satan walks to and fro. He can't run. He walks. Where you going, Satan? Going to and fro, seeing him. But God says he runs. He is never out of the way. Never to to seek or to uh, to seek the loss. <laughs> See, while Satan is walking, God's already been there. Wow. He's coming back. He's going to get <laughs> You see, Satan walking. God has already been there and prepared the way. 
Satan can't sneak up on you. You think he can? Because God already warned you. So oftentimes we don't take heed to what God is saying. But God is always dead. Wow. He'll show you your enemies. He'll show you what's coming up. Wow. Take heed when he shows you. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so because he became ill and diseased in his feet because he loved darkness rather than life. He hated the preacher. He had the preacher arrested and put in prison because he pointed out his evil doings. When I say God sees all things, he sees your good and he sees your bad. Touch not my anointing, do my service no harm. He warns us. Asa wound up with a disease in his foot. Couldn't walk. Lost all that he had because he went against the will of the Lord. God had given him victory over and over, but he chose to make his allegiance with man. Man can't save you. Man can't do anything for you. But God can. Be careful where you place your allegiance. Don't put your trust in me. Put your trust in God. God sees all. Don't worry about man who can destroy the body. Wow. But worry about God who can destroy both the body and the soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But all hope is not long. God mercy went to Calvary for you and me. And died that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. In other words, you would not have a chance today if it had not been for God. He sees all. He knows all. He knows where you are. He knows your address. Put your faith and trust in God. And he will never let you down. He will walk with you even till the ends of the earth. That's why God says, I go away to prepare a place for you. But I'm coming back. Well, well. I'm coming back for you because I'm going because I'm going to receive you. I'm not trusting nobody else to come for you. Well, but I'm coming back for you. You see, well. uh, my brothers and sisters, somebody else might take you to the wrong place. But because well. now, nobody's going to come where they don't belong to be. So I'm coming back.